Imagine you can produce the power you need where you consume it. No fossil fuels, no heat, no combustion. Power, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. A zero grid solution, powered by the Earth Engine. SRI about to enter the motor room. Here we go. Here we are. There it is. Spinning the away. Your electrical demands probably around seven to eight kilowatt max, maybe a little bit more yeah. than that. So um, one of these will do between four and five average homes. Wow. Now shutting down and what startup? I mean, as far as this never shuts off. Never, uh, you don't ever have to shut we, it off. If, it, if, it, if there's a shutdown, it means there was an issue. Yeah. It runs all the time. Now, when the range is not on, then you're just storing all the energy. That it uses. Yeah, quite a bit. So you don't have to add any power to it. It just has its battery. It has a parasitic load that uh -huh. comes off of a 700 watt battery. So this uh, takes between four and 600 watts of parasitic load. Okay. And then uh, and then pumps out the uh, pumps out the balance. There's actually there's no friction. There's no Belts, drives, gears. No brushes. Yeah, it's brushless. It's a. Uh, how long does that battery last? Typically, give uh, you. It'll give you uh, like 15 starts over its, you know. Uh, we guarantee it for 10 years or 15,000. The initial juices okay. to start that. Yeah. So Pretty is well. all of this room powered by this now? Correct. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations <laughs> to you. Hey folks, and welcome to one of my most important and most exciting video documentaries I have ever, ever done. This is super exciting stuff, and it's just getting started. It's an embryonic stage. Not only are we learning about biomagnetic healing in order to help people and ourselves with issues and the toxicity in our world today, having answers that can actually take down big pharma and eliminate needs for hospitals and whatnot using biomagnetic healing, as we've been talking about and bringing to you over the past uh, year or so. This induction, uh, induction uh, earth engine at induction energy company, they're out of uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Scottsdale, Arizona. And that video clip you just saw was an actual working machine that's power, it can power four to five homes from that one standalone magnetic propulsion machine. Powering humanity using magnetic propulsion, the world's most efficient energy source. Wah. Earth Engine is the world's first and only power source propelled by asymmetrical magnetic propulsion. It can generate electricity, operate liquid pumps, air compressors, and other mechanical devices 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and it's fully independent of the power grid and offers significant cost savings over other technologies. Let me read that again. It is fully independent of the power grid that exists and offers significant cost savings. The Earth engine creates constant, reliable, and renewable energy. And look at the output on this thing. Uh, the induction energy has developed and manufactures and installing, I believe this is their 3.0 model, a seven and a half to 25 kilowatt engines capable of driving up to 4,000 pounds of inertia power and delivering in excess of 25 kilowatts of energy that's huge and these aren't just some fly-by-night guys that have put together uh inductance energy uh company these are guys that have serious business ceo corporate director president wide variety of, of world companies and this the chief engineer dennis danzik uh, has had a 33-year career in mechanical engineering with over 500 products and also uh vince melly these are guys that have been doing this and putting this together and discovering the ancient uh, energy uh, secrets. And also, uh, the Wall Street Journal has actually picked up the story on Mr. Danzig. One man's uh, the future of everything, one man's unlikely quest to power the world with magnets. Mr. Danzig has invented a whirly gig <laughs> that calls for the suspension of disbelief and the laws of physics. If it works as advertised, it would rank with the harnessing of steam, electricity, and the atom. 
How exciting is this? And so I'm going to show you the uh, the Earth engine. And here it is, their, their third prototype. I think they call it the 30 model. And this is the device that was installed in the Las Vegas uh, uh, shooting range uh, recently. I believe it was last year. And as I said, this device alone with a battery uh, attached to it can power four to five homes from this one standalone machine uh, 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 device. And here's Mr. Danzig explaining the device and how it works. Very exciting. Pretty cool, right? This is Model 30. This is a third in a line of commercial earth engines uh, that, are, that were produced here at the National Training Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm going to take a few minutes to show you some of the features of Model 30. Model 30 uses approximately 4,000 pounds of mass, 2,000 pounds in each flywheel. Uh, these particular flywheels have their uh, magnetic fields being generated here at the uh, flywheel level and then the actual accelerated magnetic field is here between the space between this segregated wall and the actual flywheel and as you can see there's absolutely no contact uh, between the engine at any point between its shafts any other belts pulleys motors or chains the pulse rate is a very important discovery here and that the difference between 24 is approximately 80 pulses per minute this engine model 30 has a pulse rate up to a in excess of 5,000 pulses a minute, meaning that we can drive it at much, much higher speeds. This also has an intercept speed, so we get double the power that we were because they're counter-rotating. It also helps control gyroscopic precession, which is typically generated from a spinning mass. Now we'll go around the backside and I'll explain how the alternator is driven on an earth engine. And these are very unique uh, because they are zero contact alternator devices that produce up to 600 volts, both AC and DC uh, voltage. And that voltage can be converted to household current, 120 volt single phase, as they say, or 240 volt single phase, or 480 volt three phase. And I'll take just a minute to show you how it uh, operates. This alternator is a 10 kilowatt head um, that operates at a very low speed. Uh, it'll produce uh, energy uh, literally only at a couple of RPM. Um, all the way up to about a thousand RPM. And you can hear the engine winding up now. Um, the Z drive that's on the, uh, on the end of this alternator um, picks up uh, the magnetic flow, transfers that into, changes it to mechanical energy, and drives uh, these mass plates, which in turn drive the alternator and allow it to take a little bit of a shock load as uh, people plug in or turn on a hair dryer or whatever you might be running on, the, uh, on an earth engine. I'm going to go ahead and pull it back. I'm going to eject the Z drive from the Z drive plate so that you can see that it is not connected in any way to the earth engine itself. There we've ejected the alternator completely. You can see it slowing down and you can see the Z drive winding down because no more uh, magnetic pressure is available to it at this point. I'm gonna let it come to a complete stop and then we'll slowly reinsert it so you can understand how we're converting magnetic energy into mechanical energy. So I'm just now getting it to the edge of the field and as you can see, it's only about an inch inserted. It's already transmitting that energy uh, via magnetic pressure through the Z drive through the transmission to the alternator. And now you can hear the Z drive actually creating torque uh, into the transmission and transmitting that mechanical energy into the alternator and producing electrical current. And as you'll notice, there's absolutely no contact between the Z drive head itself and the Z drive plates. So here's the mechanical apparatus he was talking about, the generator that generates, takes it from magnetic energy and actually generates it into electricity to power homes or your businesses through this device.
it would appear it was built upside down. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. No. And this is so simple. I mean, what what this does? There are there are four poles to this. One, two, three, four. One of these poles turns this to generate electricity. Right. The other three create a a a well I'll get, use a simple term create a current part of the current would go out here and he would use use that current what you, one of these poles runs this for electricity the other three uh, the other three poles you basically what you're doing you're separating mass from energy the energy goes down and flows into the the crank the mass comes up through the chain over to his tripod. Have you ever saw the yep, tripod? Yeah, with the, the black box on top. It's not here, I noticed. No, that's that motor most likely was the motor that was in the black box, and somebody robbed all the copper out of this stuff, and that had a fair amount of copper in it. Uh, well, that makes sense, because that's why it doesn't look like a motor. Yeah. I can tell those are magnets. I'm and there, quite there, used to, there used to be a copper coil here. There used to be six copper coils inside. Uh, and basically what you're doing, you're separating mass from energy, and I'm putting it simple, you're separating mass from energy. The mass gets sent up through the chain. If you notice, there's always a cable connecting to where he was working. I did, I did see that. And what it is, what you're doing, you're raining. What it'd be like if you had a, a big chunk of wood on the ground, and you said lift that. Well, if that was a thousand pound chunk of wood, yeah, I can't lift that damn thing. Well, if you filled that around that with water, it would raise. Right. Okay, now, using the same concept, water, you can see, well... I mean, Energy is the same, but you can't you see can't it. You can't see it. If you have tiny particles oh, wow. of mass, you I, can't see it. I'm glad I woke up yeah. when I did. And that's... Now, and, and the interesting thing is, is if you increase this... I mean, I don't know, have you ever got shocked by a spark yes, plug on a lot yes, of Yes, you bet. Okay, well, that, one of those magnets can do, give you a, give you a, if you, if you've got a spark, you know, that's, that's six, eight, ten, fifteen thousand volts. If you look how many magnets, plus what they're done, they're stepped, it's stepped up in, in a series of three, you increase it one, two, three times, putting out, <laughs> you, if you let this build, this just keeps building. 50,000, 100,000, really? 1,000, uh, half a million, million, two, three million. So it runs, it, it's infinite. That's infinite. Infinite free energy. Now, the problem is, is at some point, the mechanical stress, you can't, the, the materials can't hold the stress. That stands to reason. That makes and sense. So that's, I mean, in, in, the, in the world, in my opinion, this is, this is the most advanced machine that we've known in the last 20,000 years. And they won't let us know it. And The guy's out there telling me. I, I heard a little bit and I walked away. I'm like, I don't want to hear this. Yeah. This isn't real. And I know a lot about this guy. Yeah. I've studied this extensively. Yeah. I know the, the gravity yeah. of what this is. No, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. And then even, the, I mean, I'm looking at you know, the cuts. What, what you do with this also, it's, it's like having a hot knife through butter. I mean, if you're running with, if you're running two, three million volts through a wire, what do you have? You have a hot knife through butter is what you have. And so Recently, I have been attracted to the mystery that exists surrounding a place called the Coral Castle Museum. This site is located near Miami, Florida, USA. It is currently on the United States National Registry of Historic Places. This magnificent attraction was made by one man named Edward Leedskalnen. Ed was born in Latvia in 1887. His family came from a line of stonemasons and his grandfather owned a cemetery tombstone monument establishment. Ed Leedskalnen emigrated to the United States around 1912. Here he learned how to rig big logs and worked in North American mines. Eventually, Ed would find his way to warmer, healthier weather in South Florida. He was known to be a smart man, and it is also said that he read a lot. Ed died in 1951 and left us an enduring megalithic site to behold physically here on Earth. 
But he also wrote three quaint, informative, semi-independent booklets that in most cases accurately describes one, natural life, two, some of his philosophy, and three, more significantly, magnetic current. One large and very important thing he also left us was a unexplained magnetic iron flywheel assembly that has perplexed non-intellectual and intellectual communities alike. These include the Army Corps of Engineers, college professors, coral castle enthusiasts, and common mechanical type lay folks. Due to the permanence of this high-profiled unknown apparatus, much controversy and hypothetical conjecture has shrouded its true purpose. In Ed's little book entitled Magnetic Current, he states that he had built ten of these machines. He uses the word machines. After much research that includes reading, searching files, measuring actual values of factual remains, and conducting actual experimentation, etc., I have deduced the simple logical truths about Coral Castle. I have built one of Ed's machines to almost full completion. Most of this truth behind this machine was hidden due to many unforeseen occurrences and circumstances. Also, significant engineering knowledge and mechanical aptitude is required to actually describe the total process that Ed used as well as the true purpose for the wheel and its four prominent clover leaves from an electrical point of view. Now here's how the machine works. A few batteries in the system reside inside the wheelhouse. Some of their current will turn the wheel, which is a giant variable speed rotary switch. There is a unit called a PMH that is actually the DC motor's field statter that magnetically pulses the wheel around in one direction. This in turn makes and breaks an electrical contact. This electrical contact is mounted to a follower that rides on the four-leaf clover cam lobes. This sends a signal from the same battery bank out to all the tripods on a third positive wire. To summarize the machine's totality, when that pulse of battery voltage is sent out on the grid's third wire, it picks up a small relay like that of a car horn. When that small relay pulls in, it makes a larger contact, sending bigger, more local battery current down the tripod and into the actuating solenoid. This solenoid pulls back an iron drive shaft or any other type of iron slug and then a spring returns the actuator back when the rotary switch drops out again. There can be multiple actuators cutting at the same time to really accomplish a lot in a short time. Most manpower is spent moving the rocks, not cutting or sculpting them. Sweet. So in closing, let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on what we can do, what we should do, what we need to do. Let's help support induction energy however we can. Let's get out our little mechanical engineers and help teach them how to create these devices as well so they can be shared and they can be enjoyed and they can be used by others. Um, it's pretty exciting when we see this kind of device that's being developed and being implemented that it can be engineered and it can be made like I said, four to five homes that can be uh, can be used as well. And let's support the man's uh, non likely. Let's make it a likely quest by giving the powers and the tools that we can to take down the machine, but also to provide a better way. And also, this is really cool. I found uh, in the crop circles um, that are being made that they have put in in the crop circles the magnetic motor itself. They designed it into the crop circles. Crop circles are nothing more than putting uh, lenses, uh, templates, 
over lasers and then they just burn the crops out how they want them to it's no no aliens no magical forces being put in it's just technology being used but in the technology being used they showed us that the magnetic motor is the motor of the future so let's use Howard Johnson let's use Mr. Lightweights let's use uh, Mr. Danzig's work and let's promote free energy for all free independent microgrid energy off the grids of the power suppliers who do not look out for us, do not care about us, and do not want us to take back the power to ourselves. This is a huge game changer.